Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie from Reason TV, and we're at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas, and we're talking to Gene Epstein, who works at Barron's, the Economic News Weekly. Gene, thanks for talking to us. Pleasure. You are, among many things, you are a, a strong follower of Murray Rothbard. You know, at an event like this, you run into a lot of people, Rothbardians, anti-Rothbardians, etc. How do you take the measure of Murray Rothbard, the renegade Austrian school economist, influence on the contemporary libertarian movement? I think he was basically the most influential. He was really uh, Plato to Ludwig von Mises' Socrates. Ludwig von Mises came from Austria. He was a Jewish refugee from Nazism. And uh, he came to New York in 1949. And he set up a seminar at NYU. And Rothbard, who was then a Columbia graduate student, attended his seminar. And while Mises published splendidly in English, it was really left to Rothbard, who was a gifted writer, to take Mises' ideas and extend them to some degree, make them clearer, and uh, apply them okay. uh, in now, many books. So let's yeah. take that into the yeah, libertarian sure. movement. How, yeah. did, how did Rothbard kind of popularize Misesian understanding of, you know, of, of the economy or of human action to, uh, to a broader audience? Well, I think he uh, popularized it mainly uh, through his brilliant writing. Uh, he was a guy from Brooklyn uh, with a very sort of down-home style, very straightforward and simple. Mises was a German, a uh, little bit more complicated in the way he wrote. So Rothbard, more than any economist, taught me uh, to understand the ways in which government is an actor in the economy. Government is not the philosopher king. Uh, it's not the and overseer. It's not the, and it's not the referee. Not the referee. Yeah, yeah. it is. It, it's a, an actor that has its own interests yeah. and its own ambition. Yeah, to some degree, uh, James Buchanan, public choice theory, contributed to that. And Rothbard mainly had respect for that. But clearly, government politicians, bureaucrats, officials, they all act on their own incentives. And, uh, and they're all, in lots of ways, fumbling as well. Now, Rothbard, in the, uh, in the 60s, in the late 60s, he pioneered an, uh, you know, attempts to kind of create a fusion between radicals on the far left as well as libertarian radicals. Uh, you know, was that successful, uh, or why, why, why was it not successful? I don't think so. No, I, I, I think Rothbard clearly had a combative personality. Uh, he was not made, not cut out for politics. He, he uh, I think he unnecessarily, to some degree at least, uh, impugned other free market economists. Uh, Ronald Coase, for example, he got Coaseism all wrong. A, a Nobel Prize winning economist. A Nobel Prize winning yeah. economist, who I think had some good ideas. And Rothbard caricatured him, so he's a man of many flaws. Even, even as an intellectual, he wasn't totally fair to some of the people he criticized. But certainly as somebody who operated, tried to operate in the political arena, he was clearly perverse. In, in the uh, late 80s, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he worked a lot with Ron Paul and yeah. with Lou Rockwell yes. and whatnot, but at a certain point, he also kind of broached a uh, romance or a bromance, maybe, of David Duke and of kind of a Southern populism. Yeah. Where did that come from? And does that fit in his larger intellectual project of, you know, of kind of talking about economics clearly? I like to think not. I do recommend, for example, to people a book that he wrote, a popular book called For a New Liberty. Mm -hmm. I believe that virtually every chapter in that is fresh and makes sense and, and adheres uh, to the proper line and, and, and makes good distinctions, fair-minded distinctions. But in, uh, when it came to politics, it brought the worst out of it. When it came to this de the devious way in which he, for example, he allied himself with, with Pat Buchanan, all of that just made no sense uh, where he really did not belong. But of course, his output as an, as a, as an intellectual was just astonishing, uh, 25 books, uh, thousands of articles, uh, a massive amount of uh, material worth Do you, So what, what's the enduring, if it's, if it's possible to sum up his legacy, uh, you know, and, and the message that he should be sending to the contemporary libertarian movement, what's the best message we can take out of Rothbard's work? So many, really, yeah. uh, in a way to choose one would be uh, to, uh, 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 to diminish him. Uh, certainly his message about that the origins of money, money begins from a commodity, no government can create money. Uh, government gets involved with money because it wants to fight its wars. Mm -hmm. Government gets involved with money because now it wants to finance the welfare warfare state. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the last thing government should be involved in is money. Rather, they should be producing shoes. The shoes will pinch, but we'll wear sandals. Money is the last thing they should be involved in. 
uh, his contribution to a, an understanding of how government control of a money supply produces business cycles, mm -hmm. uh, his understanding of, of how wages rise, his insight, by the way, uh, that that capital uh, gets no re capital gets no returns. The only returns are land and labor. Capitalists get returns because they're entrepreneurs, because they take risks. His explanation of interest rates, all of that, very very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, so that if you read Man, Economy and State, mm -hmm. for example his fundamental book about right. Austrian economics, uh, you'll learn most of what is valuable in economics. 95% yeah. of what you have to read is that book. Yeah. All right, well, we will leave it there. Gene Epstein of Barron's, thanks for talking about the legacy and life of uh, Murray Rothbard at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.